Hey gang, I'll give you one guess. <clears throat> I've had requests to uh, get back to basics, back to putting up uh, videos about uh, my firearms and my lighters. Uh, the firearms, there really isn't much to uh, show that I haven't already, so um, I am going to go ahead and do this lighter video because recently I got a phone call to go to or to go check out a uh, an estate sale where uh, somebody had some Zippo lighters under glass. Uh, come to find out, there were only three Zippo lighters in total, um, but there were a couple of other neat ones that I uh, went ahead and picked up, and I picked up for a great price. Um, so, set that box there. Now this one I've had for a while. I'll tell you the story on it, and I'll try to keep this video relatively short. Now there's a story behind everything though, so it takes a little bit of time. Uh, these two lighters were the new pickups. Uh, this one is an ASR, uh, USA made. And it's an automatic, it's got a little thumb thing there, you just push it. It comes up and strikes the wheel. Uh, this one does work, I just have not put flint or in it or filled it. so and no real need to and I only gave three bucks for it not bad and I like automatic lighters so there's that one um, then we'll skip over this is a 1937 or excuse me 1935 replica um, and I've actually had a 1937 uh, incredible lighter it was in fantastic shape and uh, I paid one dollar for it. And I actually gave the guy four quarters. Sold it on eBay back in 1998 for $757. That was a pretty good investment on my dollar. So for a lot of you that don't think that there's no money in collecting lighters, I can't tell you how wrong you are. I survived for 18 months just selling lighters on eBay. Uh, after I had my water skiing accident in 1996 so and the 1937 was the last one on the list uh, that I was selling but anyway we'll come over here this one obviously is a nine ball billiards lighter it was given to me by my daughter and her boyfriend uh, Wiggle and Mittens and um, <clears throat> yes I said Wiggle and Mittens that's their nicknames on the reverse side, if you guys can read that. The gentleman that they bought it from put Zippo Virgo on the back and even spelled it right. So he was a Zippo nut like me and he knew exactly what that meant. So that made it easy for him to spell it right without any issues. Um, this one made, was made in 2013, January of 2013. Dating these lighters, the, the new dating system is really easy, but you get behind the, the past 16 years of dating, then you have Roman numerals. Prior to that, you had hash marks, dashes, and dots uh, to date the lighters. And way back, you just had the stamp styles, patent numbers, so on and so forth. Uh, so we got the 1935 replica, this one, and this one's interesting only in that it is an armor case. It was made in 2011, it's been my primary carry lighter for the last five years. And the case is just much, much, much thicker, heavier walled, and it's a heavier lighter overall than a standard Zippo, than a standard Zippo. So, I'm going to set these two out of the way since we've already talked about them. Um, but this has been my standard carry and it stays in my pouch and you can see the circle from the snap so it's obvious I carry it this way in my pouch on the right hand side I know I'm talking real soft sorry I'll try to speak up uh, let's get on to this one uh, a lot of you that collect lighters will recognize this is a very popular lighter with collectors it is called the Thorin's automatic and made in Switzerland Thorns Fab Suisse and uh, this one's in nice used condition couple tick marks some 
plating wire uh, which isn't uncommon it's been engraved with e dot l dot k dot or elk um, neat thing about these a couple different things it has a lock it's an automatic and it has a lock uh, just a screw lock you unscrew it push the button opens and you close it and you can't can't open it so it's safe to put in your pocket it's for safety lighter uh, they started making these in the 1930s late 1920s early 1930s um, this has a uh, spare fuse holder in the fill cap I just screw that little bugger off right there put a spare fuse in there or excuse me fuse listen to me ha flint how about that put a spare flint in there has a little gasket on there just screws into the bottom just like uh, filling and putting a flint in a zippo lighter um, but the way you add the flint in this one is way 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 different so let's uh, go ahead and get this sucker open and it works marvelously it stays on my desk so there you go now this one has two claws one claw on either side and the flywheel is at a slight angle and slightly offset in there and it has three pins in it and what happens is when you close it this arm is spring loaded and the lid is spring loaded two separate springs and when I got it I only paid three bucks for this lighter so you, some of you collectors out there are just gonna be like ah oh, wow you stole it yeah well yeah I did I mean I could easily sell it in the conditions condition it's in for I have 40 ish in, in that range right now uh, the market's going kind of soft with the onset of uh, internet sales but um, the uh, claw spring was screwed up in this let me tell you the Thorns company made phonographs music boxes I mean really small tiny detailed stuff um, and they're very very good at what they do but without the right tools and the, and the knowledge replacing that claw spring the spring for that claw let me just go ahead and push this down and get the lid out of it. there you go okay this spring for this right here and by the way that's how you change the flint you just push the claw down like I just did move the lid up out of the way so your spring tension is off and it moves the uh, this is a dual purpose spring right here that I'm touching that spring opens the lid and holds the flint down at the same time and it just goes in and it uh, anchors itself to the back of the lid so and you don't want to just close it after you replace the flint you have to push that claw back down and under the wheel that has the pins that rotates around to strike your flint um, but that tiny little spring right there was all messed up what a pain to get that sucker back in but I finally got it back in and the thing like you saw just works marvelously so to reset it after you've replaced your flint you take the claw push the claw down as far as it'll go and continue holding the claw down and then when you get it that far then you push and close then the next time you strike it may miss uh, the uh, strike wheel if the pins are not in the right orientation so you want to hold your finger here so keep the lid from flying too far open and flipping your flint out so then you just push all right, so it did spark and it did catch. So now we'll do it again. And off it goes running. So really neat lighter. Really neat lighter. Um, love the mechanics of it. So like I said, this video may be sort of kind of long. Not super, but maybe sort of kind of long. And this was a new old set that I picked up at a flea market. Uh, it's also a Thorns. A different style of Thorns lighter. But it also has a cigarette pack in it. It's snake skin. It's really, really cool check that out how's that for a neat set the engine turning I mean this is a brand new set engine turning is beautiful on it um, it's just just a gorgeous lighter
little wind screen on there. But it's just a flip top, it's just like a uh, like a Zippo, but there's no distinctive click when you're opening and closing. A little bit of a click if you close it with a little bit of force. So just a really neat lighter. And the uh, as you can see, the snakeskin wrap is a little bit loose on there. But and this is a cigarette pack for and the only thing that can be put in here is filterless cigarettes. But very very nice set. So anyway, I've had this one for a while. I paid ten bucks for that. Not bad, not bad. Box is in great shape. Now we're going to skip over to the creme de la creme, my best find, and it came in this box. Big box for a Zippo. Also came with a bag to hold it in. Felt bag really nice came with two sets of instructions one and two and you can read what it says there the new Barcroft desk and table lighter by Zippo this is a Barcroft number three and it is an advertising it's a three color advertising lighter that has never been used there's the felt felt's in perfect shape it only has just little fluffies from the felt bag that it was in. Here's your advertising, Century Electric, Fort Wayne, Indiana. And even these big ones had a distinctive click. So pretty neat. Has a standard Zippo insert. The uh, patent number is 25017191, which is correct for uh, lighters made after 1956-ish, 57-ish, when the patent was renewed from 2032695. But it's never had a flint in it, except for the original flint. And I've got a way to get, and well, the, the, the flints, they powder. At, they turn into powder and then wind up compressing the flint tube, and sometimes they'll split the flint tube. Fortunately, this one was kept in a low uh, humidity environment and it didn't split the flint tube. You have to pull all the batting and all the packing out and everything to check it and keep from disturbing the wick and remember the order that the packing was in so you can put it all right back in place after you check the tube and then clean the tube out. And the way I clean the tube out is pretty simple actually. Uh, you take the spring and uh, screw out that holds the flint and a uh, drill bit that has the angle increased on it to about about like that okay from your standard drill bit angle to about like that and it does a much better job of cutting through that um, <coughs> excuse me cutting through the powdered flint that turns into powder and then gets solid again it's kind of a bizarre composition uh, but anyway the uh, neat thing about this is a Barcroft Model 3 and the neat thing about the Model 3 there's the insert you can see is that it has a secondary wicking chamber this is also full of batting and then it has a wrapped cord in the center that continues to fill this lighter so you fill this lighter completely up fill the insert up fill the body up and you'll go through probably three or four flints and it'll last you two three months of consistent uh, use so just pretty incredible pretty neat um, but it being a Barcroft Model 3 and in the condition that it's in which is brand spanking new condition undamaged unblemished with a three color the lightning being gold and you got the red and the black uh, three color advertising it's it's definitely a very nice uh, addition to the Zippo lighter collection so uh, this is gonna bore some people sorry uh, it's gonna entertain others who have uh, a, a great appreciation for Zippo lighters and for uh, Tabacchiana in general and I have been collecting since the 
early 1980s. I've still got my very first Zippo that I purchased in 1982. Um, and I've been uh, collecting, buying, and selling Zippos now for... Hey, what is that? 34 years? That's uh, a good long while. So anyway, that thus ends this uh, Zippo lighter video and general lighter video. And uh, I want to thank all you guys for sticking around, hanging out, and checking out uh, this video. It's a little offbeat from what I usually do nowadays, but it is what I used to do all the time. So I hope everybody enjoys. I'll catch you later. Zippo, later. Bye.